Niagara Falls, the awe-inspiring, powerful natural wonder straddles the U.S.-Canada border and pounds into the Niagara Gorge at a rate of 28 million liters a second, mesmerizing millions of visitors every year. But the federal riding of Niagara Falls, Ontario encompasses much more than that. The city of Niagara Falls, with all its many fun and exciting attractions, rides, water parks, museums and casinos. The town of Niagara on the lake, with its charming shops and restaurants and the famous Shaw Festival. And all around is fruit and wine territory, with over a hundred wineries, many of them internationally acclaimed. This riding also includes Fort Erie with its many historic sites and a racetrack that is within two kilometers of the United States. These are border towns and tourism is the driving force of the economy here, employing either directly or indirectly 40,000 people. Politically, Niagara Falls has been conservative for the last 17 years. From 2004 to 2019, the riding was represented by Rob Nicholson. It underlines uh, the challenges that we all have. A high-profile Conservative MP and Cabinet Minister in both Brian Mulroney's and Stephen Harper's government. My name is Rob Nicholson. He retired in 2019, but on his way out, he campaigned successfully on behalf of his longtime friend and former colleague, Tony Baldinelli. Oh, great. Why don't I show you inside? Their relationship goes way back to when the MP gave Baldinelli his first job right out of university, and Baldinelli worked for him for six years. Rob, to me, not only is a mentor, he's, he's, he's what is good in politics. I mean, people in it for the right reasons, trying to help people. Politics truly is a noble profession. People tend to forget that. I love the campaign headquarters. Nicholson helped Baldinelli win the election last time and has been on the scene this time around too. Convinced Baldinelli is the man for the job locally in Niagara Falls and Aaron O'Toole is the man to lead the country. When I was in government uh, and Canada's defense minister and then foreign affairs minister, he was veterans affairs minister and I was very impressed with the work that he did and how tirelessly he worked on behalf of the veterans and of this country here. And uh, so I always knew that he would be very good for whatever role he took on. And so he's a great fit. What would you say is the major issue for you and your party in this riding? Right now, it, it, it's about the recovery. And, and who has the proper plan, who has the vision of how do we get to a better future. We're a border community, right? I mean, tourism is huge for this community. We typically would receive about 14 million people, visitors. I mean, in the tourism sector specifically, we were hit first, we were hit hardest, and we're gonna take the longest to recover. Well, Thank you so much. Any questions, let me know, I okay? Yeah. All right. Okay. Bye-bye. 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 Tony Baldinelli has the advantage of incumbency, but a Conservative win is far from a given. And we'll thank them for their lawn sign. For one thing, the riding can swing. During the Chrétien years, Niagara Falls was Liberal for more than 10 years. And now the Liberal Party believes it has a strong candidate in Andrea Kaiser. She ran federally in 2019 and lost to Baldinelli, but it was close. A difference of just over 2,000 votes or 3%. You know, it's not easy to, to, to suffer a defeat, but you, you're coming back for more. I, I truly don't look at it as a defeat. Um, I uh, was nominated a couple of months before the election and think if we had had one more week, uh, we would have made it happen. So I am uh, excited to build on the momentum that we built in 2019. And truly, I haven't stopped since. And you basically started campaigning right after the last election. <laughs> Kaiser is not only an experienced politician, she was a three-time municipal councillor in Niagara-on-the-Lake for 10 years. She also has deep roots in the wine industry. Her father was co-founder of Inniskillen, which put Niagara Wines on the map. Good to see you. <laughs> I remembered. Kaiser is well-known and well-liked. Thanks, Margaret. And as she says, 
She's in it to win it. What drives me is what the work I have to do, the commitment I have to the riding, the commitment I have my, to my team. And every day is a step forward for us. Every day we work hard. Every day we knock on more doors. Every day we hear what the community wants. And that is what I plan to bring as the MP, is the voice of people in Niagara Falls, Niagara on the Lake, and Fort Erie to Ottawa. And if elected, if I have that privilege, um, I plan to put aside um, partisan politics as far as representation. I want to be an MP for everybody and I want to speak broadly mm -hmm. and um, you know that's the work I have to do. Andrea Kaiser got some high profile help of her own when we visited her Niagara Falls headquarters in week two of this snap election. Liberal MP Adam Vancouverden brought some volunteers to help do some canvassing with Kaiser. We're really excited to have you all here today. Uh, we have our special guest canvasser Adam Vancouverton who you know from Milton. The Olympic champion kayaker has only been in office since 2019, but has some star power and is very popular. He's running for re-election in his riding of Milton. Politics is a team sport and, you know, just like when I was uh, racing and training in Canada, like, you just got to make sure that you're sticking up for your teammates and making sure that we're, uh, we're all on the right track. And I know that Andrea's team has been on the right track, but it's fun. It's great for my volunteers to get out and, uh, and experience a different riding a little bit. And we'll be back in Milton by like 2.30, so, you know, we're not missing a step. Uh, and it's great to just be able to, to pitch in a little bit, help out, and to make sure that we, uh, we keep spreading the love. It's a 36-day campaign. It's, it, you don't have a lot of time um, in that regard. But I know Ms. Kaiser, the, the Liberal candidate, has been really, uh, really active over the last two years getting, you know, getting to events. You see her out there. Yeah. Um, so, you know, in a, in, a, in, a, in a race that could be tight, that yeah. could be the difference. So I don't think it's a shoe in for Mr. Baldinelli. Mm -hmm. I, I think he has the advantage with the incumbency, but, but I think this is probably the riding to watch. I think it was a bit of a surprise just in terms of calling election, uh, you know, not really sure why this has happened at the precipice of the fourth wave. Uh, just a reminder there, you know, when we're knocking on doors tonight, we have to follow COVID protocols. So. Brian Barker is the NDP candidate who also ran in 2019. He finished third, but won a respectable 18% of the ballot. Barker is a teacher and president of the Niagara Area Elementary Teachers Federation. We uh, want to, you know, hit on the things that are we feel are going to be important to to voters. So he senses a change is in the air. All right, let's do it. All right. What do you think your chances are? You know what? I mean, they're they're as good as everyone else's. Uh, I think that the NDP has. Uh, a platform that impacts everyone to make sure that you know all citizens regardless of you know if you are wealthy uh, if you are you know a working class family our platform is going to make sure that everyone uh, impacts and you know what we're hearing out the doors is great we're lucky jug meat has you know done a great job in the beginning weeks of this campaign and it really feels like there's uh, a momentum and something special is going to happen here. Tony Baldinelli has an advantage. He is the incumbent. Can Brian Barker unseat him? Absolutely. MPP Wayne Gates is an NDPer who has represented the riding of Niagara Falls provincially since 2014. Power Rangers, assemble! He is out along with numerous volunteers to support their party's federal candidate. He too predicts a political sea change this September. Okay. <laughs> and there's a good reason Gates thinks Brian Barker can win this time around. Just look at his own political history. I lost seven times. before. Federally, I you mean? I, I ran federally, I ran uh, um, for city council, I ran regional council, and it got to a point where my wife was saying to me, I don't think they want you, <laughs> but at the end of the day, I never gave up, and we've turned this riding uh, orange. Gates edged out the Conservative candidate by a slim margin in a by-election in 2014. He won decisively a few months later and then again in 2018. He sees support growing for the NDP and is excited about Brian Barker's chances. Something's happening in this country. Mm -hmm. uh, where it's going to go over the next uh, three weeks, uh, I can't predict that. But I think the NDP is certainly going to be in the game. Mm -hmm. I think the leader of the three is by far, I think Singh's by far the, the best of the three. Hello. Hey, how are you doing? I just want to introduce myself. I'm Brian Barker. I'm running to become uh, the MP here in Niagara Falls. There has been more than one recent poll that shows the NDP improving in support slightly. 
But more significantly, the Liberals' five-point lead they held over the Conservatives going into the election has slipped away. The Liberals and Conservatives are essentially tied. Insiders say one of the reasons for the Liberals' flagging support could be the resentment that many voters continue to feel about the fact that Justin Trudeau called an election in the first place. The question why keeps coming up, even in Niagara Falls, where most folks are more interested in taking pictures, going on rides, and generally enjoying themselves than talking politics. We're still in a pandemic, um, so that to me is a negative right there, right, to make people go out and vote. It's kind of weird, but they would call an election in, a, in the course of a pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's very strange, very strange. You were a Liberal supporter? We were before, and now we're, yeah. we were not too sure. I'm, I'm not too sure. And I'm not really happy with any of them, tell you the truth. I don't think it was, it's called for right now, um, especially during the pandemic, but uh, I can see his political um, motivation for it. Have, have you been a Liberal supporter in the past? In the past I have. Um, I'm in the construction trade and usually the Liberals are pretty good for construction right. trades. They, you know, they spend a lot of money so in infrastructure and everything, um, opposed to the co uh, Conservatives. But uh, personally I think it's time for uh, a change, I think. So. How do you see it going? I think it'll surprise a lot of people and uh, I think Aaron O'Toole might uh, um, actually get, make a go of it this time. Everybody thought when Mr. Trudeau called the election, he, he, you know, he, he smelled blood in the water that he was going to get the majority he craves, but it could backfire, right? I think there's a lot of people here and I don't think it's ex exclusive to the Niagara riding, but there was the question as soon as, you know, he asked for this election, why? Like we don't, you know, there doesn't seem to be any major turmoil. It seems like Parliament's been working. Um, you know, the Liberals will say, well, this is a, an inflection point now. We, we're in the recovery phase and we want Canadians to decide who they think is the best party to, to take the country forward, right? So, I mean, that carries some weight, but I think as we're being told to be cautious and to be careful about where we go and how often we get out, and then we're told that there's a need for an election right now, I think there's, it's left a sour taste in a lot of people's mouths. So it, He could there, be punished for that. He could be punished for that, yeah. In Niagara Falls, many people think there are far more pressing issues to think about than an election. Niagara Falls has suffered an economic freefall since the pandemic. It's one of the world's biggest tourist attractions, where a normal year would bring in 13 million visitors from all over the world, about 25 to 30 percent of them from the States. The pandemic and the ensuing restrictions, the prolonged closure of the U.S.-Canadian border, closure of the area's two casinos and lockdowns have resulted in an estimated loss of $2 billion in regional revenue over the past 18 months. Everyone across the world has been negatively impacted by this yes. pandemic, but in this region... Devastating, absolutely. Niagara Falls, fourth largest hotel market in Canada, just devastated. You've got 200 plus hotel motel operations. You've got 1300 plus food service operations. You've got 50 plus golf courses. Everybody's been hit hard. Exactly. Paul Willey is a professor and has worked in the hospitality industry all his life. He's heartbroken by the impact the pandemic has had on the Niagara region. And the government uh, response to support the industry just way too slow. Anybody connected to small business in the riding will likely say the economy is the number one issue in this election and getting things back to normal. And key to that is the full reopening of the border. What do you think the focus should be this election? Recovery. Anybody who lives in a border community, they understand that while there is a physical border, really it's a seamless economy and a seamless, you know, quality of life. Uh, we go back and forth and, and we have families uh, who have family and friends on both sides of the border. And so to get that flow of, of people coming across has, has been important. There are businesses on both sides of the border that people are involved in, um, you know, the workforce that goes back and forth. We have a lot of uh, Americans who have homes here, summer homes. And uh, in some of our communities um, within the riding, uh, the population doubles when they're here, you know, in the summer months. Well, really from the spring well into the fall. And so we, we haven't seen that and, and it's been huge.
huge on, on many of our businesses. One big problem standing in the way of recovery in this region now is a labour shortage. Joel Noden is the marketing director for Clifton Hill Entertainment, a company that owns a major chunk of the attractions in downtown Niagara Falls. Noden says it's hard to find willing workers because of ongoing federal government assistance. And he says that continues to hurt an already decimated tourism industry. We still don't have everything open. Uh, a lot of our operations today are still shuttered or on reduced hours because of lack of staff. Uh, with the ability to hire people during the last three to four months has been quite a challenge. The, there's a, almost a disincentive of the of the CERB program or CRB now, which don't get me wrong, was was very greatly needed at the beginning, and we needed that in order to bridge us through. But I think that's run its course. Here in Niagara wine country, we're hearing one of the few success stories of the pandemic. Because wine and other alcohol was declared essential from the beginning, Consulman Estate Winery here and other companies have been able to stay open. Even the continued closure of the American border has benefited their bottom line. That's something where, for us here in Niagara Lake, we've, we've seen a lot of Ontarians just doing their own, as you alluded to, as a bit of a staycation. So um, we've, we've really had a, a great time here at the winery, welcoming people in our own backyard, just even from the Niagara region and, and kind of they've been getting out and exploring things that they didn't know even existed. So um, I think that's been really refreshing for us. This thing is kind of fun. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> we took a tour of the spectacular Consulman Vineyard on the banks of Lake Ontario in Niagara on the lake. It's a small winery that produces close to a million bottles of wine a year. They've had to reinvent themselves to a certain extent because of the pandemic to focus more on the outdoors. And they're appreciative of federal government grants that have helped them do that. They've recently built a patio and covered dome so their guests can be outside even in the winter. We're going to, I think, probably next year um, move the dome closer to the lake. Us here at Consum and both of our new, um, the expansions that we've received, that we built from the grant, have been um, uh, multi-seasonal so we can operate them year-round. Um, which, I mean, I, and I would say without that, um, it, we, not to say we would have struggled, but there are two big enhancements that we've made um, coming out of COVID to the property. And again, all in, my, all in, the, in the aspect of keeping keeping our guests safe outdoor um, and focusing on their experience here. Slowly, things are improving. The last month has been good for tourism in the region. So beautiful. In early August, the federal government reopened the Canadian border to fully vaccinated Americans who want to come across by land. But the flow of visitors into the region has been described as a trickle compared to pre-pandemic times. And that's because it's still not easy for Americans to get across. So I'm here strictly just for tourism. Um, it's my first time ever in Canada and I just finished the Maid of the Mist tour. This young woman is exactly the kind of visitor this region craves. She decided to treat herself to a four-day vacation in Niagara, but she says border officials made her jump through hoops before letting her in the country. I had my passport, I had my vaccination card, and then I also had my molecular NAAT test result that I had to get done uh, three days prior to coming. And the officer asked me, can you pull up an email? Can you show some sort of proof that says that you got the Pfizer dose? And I was like, okay, I'm scrambling now through my phone yeah. to look for this email. And thankfully I found something. The required pre-entry COVID test can also be expensive at as much as 200 bucks a person, which is also a deterrent to coming across. So while not perfect, the Canadian border has begun the process of opening up. But to the surprise and chagrin of many, the American government has not followed suit. In fact, delayed the expected reopening on the U.S. side for another month. Every country gets to make its own decisions about how to best keep, Canadian, keep their citizens safe. What do you think about the fact that the American government did not respond in kind by reopening the border when Canada did? Well, it's extremely frustrating. We all anticipated that, OK, great. You know, now that um, we've got the Canadian government online, the presumption was that our government was ready uh, with something only to be sort of let down with the idea that there wasn't any particular uh, plan in place from the American government. Niagara Falls, New York Mayor Robert Restaino says Niagara Falls, Ontario and Niagara Falls, New York are accustomed to thinking of each other as one community, separated not by a border, but a river and a bridge. 
He says the impact of closures goes deeper than commerce. That the saddest thing about the border situation is that there are so many families who live on both sides who have been separated because of this pandemic. Especially because Canadians can get to the states freely by air. That's the frustration where you start to see these differences that make no there's no logic to it. If there were if if you told us what the logic was that says that a Canadian citizen who meets the certain travel requirements for flight can fly into Florida, fly into New York City, fly into anywhere else in the United States, but simply can't get in her car and drive across the Rainbow Bridge, and assuming she meets those same criteria, by the way, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Well, there's a hard push to open the border fully. I'm here today to introduce myself. The Liberal candidate says it's not cut and dried. She hears from many voters that they're not ready for the free flow of traffic back and forth like before the pandemic. I'll just put it in the door, okay? It's really about a balance. And I hear from a lot of voters, a lot of neighbours who say, I would like to keep the border closed. And that's why uh, we believe, I believe that vaccinations are the way out of the pandemic so that we can get vaccinated, we can stay safe, and we don't have to put businesses back on lockdown. Other issues in this riding are echoed across the country and are priorities for all political candidates, leaders and voters of all ages. Affordable housing and affordability in general come up again and again. My husband's uh, self-employed, you know, and uh, taxi owners are like the bottom of the barrel for a lot of people. But uh, well, he's a taxi owner. Yeah, he owns his own taxi. He's owned it for over 40 years now, you know, it's in the been same place. For him. And yeah, this last two years has uh, really been tough, you know, and uh, he'd like to retire, but uh, he's still not quite there. Most of the youth, they just, don't, they just don't care about politics. When it comes to young people, we talk to a group of Niagara College students who have concerns about voter apathy because they often feel that the issues that affect them most, things like the high cost of post-secondary education, are not addressed by federal parties. I would definitely agree. I can look back on myself. I believe I completely skipped my first opportunity to vote at the federal level. It was due to uh, lack of information, not understanding what related to me on one part, but then on the other area. Uh, I didn't necessarily identify with any one candidate. I didn't see myself in them and any policy was kind of, okay, this is for a homeowner, but I'm just 18. So it didn't relate to me. But one issue does capture the attention of so many youth and preoccupies millions across the country, and that is the environment and climate change. My name is Mariana Spivak. This 21-year-old is studying viticulture, which is the study of grape cultivation. Some of the points I'd like to see are, of course, environmental issues. As a viticulture student, firsthand, I'm in the field. I'm with the grapes. I see firsthand what climate change does to the grapes, puts so much stress on not just the grapes, but all the plants. So to see how Ontario is on fire right now, to see climate change initiatives, to see just green policies being put in, just something to help the environment because if it's not good now, in the future, we don't know what's going to happen. I'm studying radio, television and broadcasting. Oh, radio and television arts? Yeah. Two of the three students we talked to say they align themselves generally with the NDP. But there is another environmentally focused candidate on the ballot in Niagara Falls. Melanie Holm is the Green Party candidate. Hi, Melanie. Hi, how are you? For now, she's running her low-key campaign out of her house. She too is preoccupied with climate change and the environment. She believes every other issue should take a back seat. We have lots of sign requests coming in. And she adds she's getting a lot of support in the community. Well, I have uh, two small kids and um, I really think we need to focus on the environment in everything we do. So I, uh, I'm running based on, a, I guess, a responsibility or feeling a responsibility to do that. Climate change is coming at us fast and furious, and we're getting very close to the point where we won't be able to stop it. So uh, to me, the scariest thing is if we don't act now, it will be too late. We're already seeing the effects of climate change uh, in Niagara. We're seeing extreme weather. We're seeing um, extreme heat. We're seeing extreme cold days. We're seeing flooding. Uh, across Canada, we've had fires. So we're already seeing the effects of climate change, and that scares me.
There is also a candidate from the People's Party of Canada here. His name is Peter Terrace. This is his first time running, but in 2019, the PPC won nearly a thousand votes. Here in Niagara Falls. Mm -hmm. Ray Spiteri thinks this right-wing movement is something to keep an eye on. Terrace has been organizing anti-lockdown protests that have been surprisingly well attended. And there's a pretty, you know, boisterous bunch that that are really upset with lockdowns and and you know there, there's um, there's a bunch out there that don't think the government has done a good job but they also don't think the Conservatives would provide much of an alternative mm -hmm. so there are a lot you know there are some PPC signs out there that I have never seen before so will that have an impact in close ridings will there be enough people that will vote for the People's Party of Canada that might hurt the Conservatives. I mean, uh, they had about 1,200 votes. Tony Baldinelli is not worried. But ultimately, when I'm talking to people at the door, the only way to defeat this tired Liberal government, there's only one alternative, and that's the Conservative Party of Canada. That's the only alternative that can form a government and get things done. And so I try to convince people of that fact. So mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, it's about, you know, talking to everybody at the door, one, one a voter at a time. There is a danger of splitting the vote, though, to a, maybe only to a small degree, but in a tight race, it could make a difference, right? Well, uh, all that will happen. I mean, uh, it happens uh, right now, you know, with the Liberals and the NDP vote as well. Yeah. So, you know, the, that's something you always have to take into consideration. Yeah. You never take anything for granted. It takes energy and stamina to see a campaign through to the finish line. When he's canvassing, Tony Baldinelli runs between houses. So hopefully we can count on your support in this campaign. We always can. Andrea Kaiser connects with voters any way she can. Um, can I, I count on your support? Well. Thank you. I really appreciate it. It's going to be a really important election. Sometimes she chats through a cracked window. Sure. No, no, I, I hear you. Um, I'm very committed. Is it okay if I step in your garden? Yeah. I, I personally am not a supporter. Okay. And sometimes she gets an earful. There is an absolute crisis across the board. I don't know what happened morally to this country that our leadership is so morally lost. Well, I appreciate the feedback and... Uh... Thank God you're not an incumbent so you don't share any of that. <laughs> All the candidates say they're energized by going door to door, enjoy meeting people and hearing their concerns. They also realize how important personal interactions are when it comes to influencing public opinion, along with all candidates' debates, several of which are scheduled for the riding in the coming weeks. For CPAC, I'm Pam Seidel in Niagara Falls.